Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. September 20th, 2019. Calm as can be. Well, a little tiny breeze waving the flag. And uh, not enough to move the, the PMA, the turbine. But uh, I was up there today because it was getting a little squeaky as it turned in the wind. Um, not rotating, I mean actually turning towards the wind. Um, it needed a little lubrication, so I went up on the roof with my extension ladder and then put my extension ladder up against the mast, and I tied off the blades just in case a wind came up so it wouldn't chop me in half. And then I lubricated everything up there, and now I don't even know it's up there. Well, even when it's spinning, I mean, you don't hear anything. It's as silent as can be. Nice job. All right, so today I'm going to dedicate uh, a, a short episode, a how-to episode, to uh, my friend North at Forever North's Sanctuary, who's uh, homesteading up in uh, Maine. He started off in a tent. He's building himself a shelter right now for the winter, and uh, tells me he's going to be dealing with some pretty below zero temperatures, so I hope he gets everything put together in time. And remember, North, your battery's specific gravity will drop in very cold temperatures. So make sure you have those in a heated area for the winter when it gets really, really cold. Just like where your car won't start in the wintertime because it's too cold, the battery's specific gravity has dropped too low, you're not going to have any power in your batteries. So you want to make sure you keep your batteries warm for the winter. All right. So your question was about um, adding a controller and adding a solar panel to your system. And uh, you didn't know whether it's series or parallel. Or... Forget all that. It's real, real easy. If you want to know about whether it's series or parallel, just for your knowledge, you're going to be hooking it up in parallel. All right, so here's what happens. Here's a Harbor Freight um, 10 amp controller. These are small. They're only decide, designed to handle um, the, the 100 uh, watt solar system, the four 25 watt panels that comes with it. Okay, so here's how this, these things work. You want to add an extra one in. Very simple. Let's go up here to the MPPTs. All right, so I've got half of my panels coming in on this one and half of my panels coming in on this one. So how do you hook them up? Simple. Very, very simple. The wires coming in for your solar panels for the, the one half you want to use, connect to the solar panel, positive and negative. The ones for the second set go to the positive and negative on the solar panel connections. Okay. Now remember, you always want to hook your battery up first. So I'm not telling you to hook the solar panels up first. You're going to be hooking your battery con connections up first. So how do the battery connections hook up? All right, well, very simple. Here's your battery connections. There's the battery icon, positive and negative. So you're going to take the positive wire, and you're going to run it over to the positive pole of the first battery set. And you're using 6-volt batteries just like I am, so two batteries make a set for 12 volts. So you're going to run that first positive over to the positive on that first battery set. You're going to run the negative down to the last battery set and connect it to the negative pole, which is the one in the back. All right. So now you've got your first controller hooked up. So now you're going to hook up your second controller. So now you take the battery cable from this one, you take the positive. And you're going to run that one down to the last battery set and put it on the positive pole. And you're going to take the negative from this one and run it to the first battery and put it on the negative pole. So now you've got this one is exactly the opposite connection of that one. Positive goes to the first battery, negative goes to the last battery, positive goes to the last battery, positive goes, uh, or negative goes to the first batteries. Okay? That's all there is to it. Now, if you want to add a third one, like I did here, you can choose to hook that one up to 
positive first, negative last, or negative first, positive last. It doesn't matter. You can add as many controllers as you want into your system to handle the panels that you are going to run. So if you've got a bunch of 10 watt controllers and you need to run 100 watts worth of panels, well, you're just going to hook up 10 watts of panels to each controller and then hook them all up and just keep alternating first to last battery. Try not to ever hook them in the center of a battery. That's, that's not a good way of doing it. Okay, so what I did was I, because I had a whole bunch of controllers up here, I actually put bus bars and I marked them. These are my battery bus bars. So these all go to the batteries. So you see um, the negatives here and the positives there. They go to different connections on the battery. And I've got to clean that up yet. And over here is where the panels come in. So this bus bar and that bus bar are my panels A. That's the first set of panels. And this bus bar and that one are panels B. Those are, that's the second set of panels. Okay, so I could add a third set if I want in there. But uh, these are 100 amp controllers, so they're or claim to be 100 amp controllers, so I should be okay with those. Now, remember, I mentioned that uh, the connectors on here where you put your wires in are usually only able to handle 8 gauge wire. And I went to 6 gauge, but I used my uh, wireman's pliers to twist them down a little tighter so I could wiggle them in and get them in there really, really tight and then tighten the screws on them. So I'm running six wire on there, but you don't have to run six wire. You can, you can run eight wire on those if you want. And remember, your solar panels, I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. Your solar panels in an off-grid battery bank system are battery chargers. They do not run your equipment. Your solar panels in an off-grid system do not run your um, utilities. They don't run your refrigerator. They don't run your lighting. The batteries are doing that. All those solar panels do is charge batteries. Okay? Now, if you're putting, a, putting in, a, like on a car, you have an alternator on your car. So when your car is running, the alternator is charging the battery. So the battery is taking in 13 plus volts of electricity from the, the alternator that's running on the car. And that's keeping your battery charged so it can run your headlights and your radio and your air conditioning fan or your heater fan or whatever. Okay, that's keeping the battery charged so that it can do those things. The alternator is not running those items. Now, once the battery comes to full charge, you have a regulator on, a, on an automobile that will cut that power off so it doesn't overcharge the battery. And then when you're, whatever you're running, your lights and stuff like that, use up that power, then it starts charging the batteries again. Okay? Now, most of those are done now with alternators are done with a rectifier. And this is what a rectifier is. I don't want to confuse you and get you into rectifiers. You're not using those. You're using controllers. All the controller does is take all of your power from your solar panels and combine it all together and then puts it out in an even charge to your batteries. And it protects your batteries from overcharge by the settings that are on it. Most of them are set for 14.2 volts. If anything goes over 14.2 volts, you'll see this little arrow light up going to the little light bulb because it actually went to dump that extra power. But there's nothing connected there, so it has nothing to dump it to. So it goes into float phase. And what float means is it's no longer allowing the electricity to come in and go out anymore. It's disconnected in, inside. So you still have your power coming in, but it's not going to the batteries until you use up some of that power with whatever utilities you're running, your freezer, your refrigerator, your laptop, anything like that. Okay? That's what you have to understand. And that's why I say 
Forget everything else. Watts are what you want to concern yourself with for what you're going to run with your system. So you need to total up all of the electrical items that you're going to be plugging in to 120 volts after it goes through the inverter. And that's how many watts you're going to need. And that's why inverters are rated in watts. Okay. Your solar panels are also rated in watts. 100 watts per panel for a 12 volt panel does not mean that you're putting out 100 watts to run a 100 watt refrigerator in your house. It's only charging batteries. Okay, get that in your head. All your ba panels do in an off-grid system is charge your batteries. These batteries are what's running everything in there. That's what's hooked up to the, um, the unit here, not your solar panels. Your solar panels are only hooked to your controllers. Your controllers only charge your batteries and, and protect the charge on your batteries. After that, you take the wires from your battery bank, you put it into an inverter with really heavy wire because you're going to be drawing a lot of amps there and you're going to be drawing uh, uh, supplying to a lot of watts. Your voltage hasn't changed. Your voltage is still 12 volts. But now you're going to be powering the whole house and everything that you got in there. All those watts that you've added up that you have to run. And that includes, if you're running a 60 watt light bulb, you have to include 60 watts as part of it. Okay, so that's why I say people sometimes get confused and they think that the solar panels in an off-grid system are running the whole thing. They're not. They're nothing more than that little battery charger right there. That's all it is. It's that battery charger. That's what your solar panels do. Now, yes, you do want to have twice or, or even more solar panels than what you're going to use in wattage for your to run your house on the 120 volt on the load side. The higher, the more power you have charging your batteries, the less work your batteries have to do. Okay, so every time you're using power out of your batteries, all of those solar panels back there are supplying it back faster than you can use it up. That's your secret. That's where you want to be. You want to replace the electricity in the batteries faster than you use them up. That's why I say you need a big battery bank to run a lot of electrical items through a big inverter like this. This is 8,000 watts constant. 32,000 watt surge. Okay, so this, this will handle a 32,000 watt surge of electrical coming in and will not blow any fuses or anything like that. So all you're doing with your whole system is you're setting up enough solar panels so that these batteries don't have to work overtime. Now, if you have a lot of power coming in and you're not using a lot of power, you might hear these lead acid batteries start boiling. You'll hear them bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, you don't want to really hear that. So if you're doing that, then you want to set up something that's going to run during those peak times when, when you've got really good sun and you're putting way more electricity into your battery bank than you need to charge them. That's all you're doing is charging them. And that's I'm trying to drive that through your head. You are not running your house on the solar. It's different than a grid tie solar system that people have on their houses living in the city. Okay, They're not charging batteries. All they're doing is supplying it directly into their panel that goes directly into usage. And each one of those little panels that they have are usually 24 volt. And all of those have a mini inverter, a mini one of these, connected to each panel that converts the power that comes out of them from 12 volt to 120 volts and puts it straight into their electrical panel so they can use it in the house. All right? That's all that's, that's, that's doing. If they decide to put a whole house battery pack in there for when the power goes out, they still have power because a lot of people don't realize... If you have solar on your house and you don't have a battery bank backup on that, when the power goes out in your neighborhood, your power goes out. Okay? You're not allowed to pump electricity into the grid from your solar system 
if the power is out in the whole neighborhood. That's because the guys up there on the pole know that there's no power in the lines so they can work on them. And if you start sending electricity through there, you're going to electrocute somebody up on top of the pole. All right? I hope this all clears things up for a bunch of people out there, especially you north. You need that information, and uh, it's probably going to help you out a lot. I'm sure that if you have any questions, you've got my personal email. Go ahead and email me, and I'll be glad to uh, uh, answer those in email if I can. If not, I'll do another video like this, and I'll let you know exactly what you need to do. Because... I've been out here now going, well, this whole thing started four years ago, but I started my solar system before that when I lived back in the city, and I had it set up in my backyard, and I went through tr trial and error about everything, about how to learn how solar actually works. I tried with uh, a modified sine wave. I tried with pure sine wave. I burnt up a freezer. I burnt up a couple of box fans. I burnt up a laptop computer. I learned all of that stuff the hard way. Okay, so I know what I'm talking about when I'm telling you all of this stuff. Those solar panels are battery chargers. Don't let anybody tell you those are running your system, or running your electricity in your cabin. They are not. They are bit charging batteries. That's all they do. That's all that does. That charges batteries. That's why there's only number 10 gauge wire coming off of that system down through the rectifier and charging batteries at 12 volts. It's, it's, it's just a battery charger. Okay, and if you've end up got any battery charger in your life, I don't care if it's a big battery charger or a small battery charger, they all have small cables on them. That's because they don't have to carry a lot of load. They're not running a load. They're charging batteries. That's the explanation, the simple as I can get it. G-Bear, reminding you, give me a thumbs up down there, please. Don't forget to subscribe. Hey, I went over 1.3K already this uh, last couple of days. I'm sorry I haven't posted. I've been lazy. And uh, it's coming up on when the eagle flies and I get some money back again. So I'll uh, be able to afford to go pick up some more materials and do some more things. In the meantime, I've been enjoying my garden and working in there and just doing laundry and cleaning up the yard and pre preparing for winter, things like that. All right, everybody. G-Bear wishing you all a good evening and a happy holiday, whatever's coming up next. And whatever you want to do, enjoy it. Life is short. G-Bear signing off.